Lesson 1C translations. Um, that's going to be our main focus, in translations. There are really four different types of things where shapes move or change, and that, those are all titled transformations. Today the focus is on uh, translations, which is basically where a figure is sliding along a line without turning. Uh, tomorrow we'll deal with reflections where we have a shape that's reflected across a line, kind of like a mirror image. And then the next day uh, we will deal with rotations. And we'll go a little bit more in depth, like I said earlier, than you may have done last year if you talked about all three of these things. So quickly, identify each type of transformation in one through four. If you're not sure, look at the picture that had all three of them in it, uh, the one that we just talked about. I'll give you about uh, maybe 30 seconds to do all four of those. Uh, number one is a reflection because the figure, the quadrilateral, is slipping across the y-axis where the y-axis is like the mirror. Number two, uh, the triangle is sliding along a straight line, so that is a translation. Number three... Uh, we have the figure sliding, once again, across a straight line, much like number two, so that's a translation. And then number four is rotating about uh, zero comma zero or the origin. All right, so translation is where the shape is sliding without turning. Uh, this, this first part here, this is not in your notes, but just kind of watch... Uh, I needed to define that if I ask you to find coordinate notation or a coordinate rule that you know what I'm talking about. A coordinate notation or coordinate rule is a formula that explains a translation. And they all look like this, where we have x comma y translates to x plus a number or x minus a number comma y plus a number or y minus a number. That's what all of our coordinate rules will look like. So for example, if I take the ordered pair negative 2 comma 5 and I plot it on that coordinate plane, it would be uh, right there. It would look like that. And then if I take from that and I translate to 3 comma negative 3, which would be right here, there are two different ways of finding what that coordinate rule was. One would be just going left to right and then up or down, kind of like we do in slope. So to go from the first ordered pair down to the second one, I could go 5 to the right, which is a positive 5 x movement, because x movement is left or right, same direction as the x-axis. And then from there, <coughs> I would have to go in the downward direction or in the y direction, uh, negative 8. So that alone could give me my, my coordinate rule. Or I could look at it this way. If I look at my two x coordinates of my ordered pairs, to get from negative 2 to positive 3, I would have to add 5 to that. And then if I look at both of my y values, to get from 5 to negative 3, I would subtract 8. So there are several different ways of getting to that coordinate rule. But in this uh, problem, going from negative 2 comma 5 to 3 comma negative 3, that's a coordinate rule of x comma y translates to x plus 5 comma y minus 8. I moved 5 in the x direction, and then I moved negative 8 in the y direction, okay? And that should seem fairly simple. All right, let's go to, and I guess I should mention this, the original sh uh, shape that we happen to start with, which in this problem happens to be an ordered pair, that's always referred to as the pre-image. After we move it, that is referred to as the image. Pre-image is the original shape, or in this case, ordered pair. Image is the shape that results after we move. Pre-image and image. Okay, number five. Here we have line segment MN, and it has been moved or translated down to the red line segment. And just a little note here, this... We call that M prime. M with a little tick mark up in the upper right-hand corner. That's M prime, N prime. So we have line segment MN translates to line segment M prime, N prime. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to come up with coordinate notation or the coordinate rule for that move. Anybody have any idea what that might be? 
what did, how did we get from the black line segment down to the red line segment? I'd like you to turn to your shoulder partner and kind of talk about that for about 30 seconds. So to go from MN to M prime N prime, I'm going to start uh, and figure out what I had to do to go from point M to M prime because MN is the pre-image, M prime N prime is the image. That's the, the part that got moved. We moved it to make M prime N prime. So we went six to the left and then four down, which is what we were told. And we could double check that with N right here. We would be going, once again, six to the left and four down. And sure enough, that checks out. So that means that our coordinate rule must be x comma y translates to x minus 6 comma y minus 4. Now the reason why I wrote the ordered pairs down as well is to talk about the second thing that I talked about in uh, the previous problem. So to get from 1 to negative 5 in the ordered pairs, I have to subtract 6. Same thing here. To get from 4 to negative 2, I have to subtract 6. Now the y values, to get from 3 to negative 1, I subtract 4. And the same thing down here to get from 1 to negative 3. So it checks out that I would have to subtract 6 from the x value and subtract 4 from the y value. Okay, any questions about number 5? So what I'm circling there, that is the coordinate rule or coordinate notation. All right, I want you to do the same thing with number 6. So in number 6, I would start at either j or k and figure out what I had to do to get to j prime or k prime, depending on where I started. Um, I already talked about image and pre-image there. So I'm going to go from j, that was 2 in the downward direction, and 7 to the right. So that translates to, and I could use the ordered pairs uh, written down that way if I wanted to. But x comma y translates to x plus 7 comma y minus 2. That's the coordinate rule. All right, so now let's take a look at 7 through 10. Now instead of me giving you a graph, I'm going to give you what's happening, much like I've stated up here, uh, in words. So come up with a coordinate rule for 7, 8, 9, and 10, and make sure you pay attention to whether you're going left, right, up, down, or some, and some of them up or down is mentioned first, but that really doesn't change things. So number 7, 6 to the right gives us x plus 6. 3 units down gives us y minus 3. So x comma y translates to x plus 6 comma y minus 3. Number 8, if you move 2 up, that of course is in the y direction. And 5 units left, that's in the x direction. So we have to pay attention there. x comma y translates to x minus 5 comma y plus 2. Number 9, 3 units down, that's in the y direction. 4 units left, that's in the x direction. Once again, we have to pay attention there. x comma y translates to x minus 4 comma y minus 3. And number 10, 4 units up, 2 units to the right, translates to x comma y translates to x plus 2 comma y plus 4. I'm going to change number 10 really quickly because I know for a fact there's one of these in the homework, and this came up when... Uh, some people were working in first period. What if I changed um, number 10 to just say uh, four units up? How, how, how does that change our uh, translation, uh, translation there? X comma Y translates to what? Plus zero. Which one? Uh, X. X. So you say X plus zero. Do we really need to write the plus zero? No, so if that second part is not there, it would just be x comma y translates to x comma y plus 4. In other words, there's no change uh, in the x value. Okay? All right, putting both things together, number 11. The triangle below is translated five units to the right and four units down. Draw the new image. You also need to fill in the blank spots and come up with a coordinate rule for this, I want you to work with your shoulder partner on number 11. We're supposed to translate that triangle 5 to the right and 4 in the downward direction and then come up with a coordinate rule. So C was uh, plotted at, or it is plotted at, negative 5, comma 1. If we're going to go 5 to the right and 4 down, that takes me to 
a new ordered pair which is titled C prime, and that would be right there at 0, comma, uh, negative 3. D prime would be located right there at 3, comma, 0. E prime would be located right there at 5, comma, negative 2. And our coordinate rule, as I'm trying to get caught up here, would be x, comma, y translates to x plus 5, comma, y minus 4. So that should be pretty easy. Let's take a look at number 12. Number 12, uh, we have a problem that we looked at earlier, but now we're going to go in a little bit more depth on some more parts of translation. So we have line segment MN is translated to M prime N prime. And what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to find the slope of each of those and also find the distance, in other words, find how long the line segment is using the distance formula, and tell me what you notice about that. So in case you've forgotten, which you should not have, that's how you find the slope. Or you could do rise over run, which since it's plotted on a coordinate plane, that's probably faster. The distance formula is this, but since everything's plotted on an ordered or on a coordinate plane, I probably We'll just go ahead and make a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. That's what I would do. So I want you to find the slope of both of those line segments and then also find how long each of those line segments are. You can work on that with your shoulder partner. I'll get back with you in about two minutes. I want to know what you notice. Not what they are necessarily, but what you notice about them. But when we find the slope of each of these segments, and once again, you could have used rise over run in the Pythagorean theorem, both slopes are negative two-thirds. Using the rise over the run, they are the same. The length of each of those line segments, creating a right triangle with the Pythagorean theorem. Once again, right here, that's three, that's two. Three squared plus two squared is 13. Same thing there. Three squared plus two squared is 13. So the square root of 13 is the distance right there. So what happens when you translate any figure... Uh, the slopes end up being the same of all the corresponding sides, and the lengths of all the corresponding sides happen to be exactly the same. So the shape does not change when you translate. So based on what I just said, I'm going to give you some information here. Here's a picture of a translation we did in an earlier problem, and this is written down in your notes, that picture. Um, if I tell you that Line segment DE, and line segment DE is right here, by the way. If I tell you that the slope of that is negative 1, you should now know what the slope of this line segment is. D prime, E prime. What is the slope of that? It's negative 1. They are corresponding sides, therefore they will have the same slope. If I now tell you that um, line segment... CE, this side right here, has a length of the square root of 26. You should now be able to tell me the length of its corresponding side or line segment C prime E prime. What's the length of that side going to be? Let's try that again. What is it? Square root of 26. The sides are corresponding sides because these are congruent shapes. Therefore, all the corresponding sides have to have the same length. So we're going to go into depth on all of these things, dealing with all the various pieces of it. All right. When, a translated sh when translating a shape, the pre-image, the new shape, which is called the image, that results is congruent to the original shape. And we saw that in both of those last two problems. This means that all the corresponding parts are congruent. The corresponding sides have the same length. And the corresponding angles have the same measure. And congruent figures, these are figures that have the same exact size and shape. If you look back at number 12, those line segments are the same exact size and shape. If you look at the triangles in 13, triangle CDE and triangle C prime, D prime, E prime, they are the same exact size and shape. And then also, the slopes of the corresponding sides are also the same under a translation. All right, so let's now go to number 15. Oh, I guess I have number 14 here. One other thing happens about translating shapes. If I connect C to C prime and find the slope, and if I connect D to D prime 
and find its slope, and if I connect E to E prime and find its slope, what do you think happens with all those slopes? They're all the same. In fact, they're all negative 4 fifths. So lots of things happen under a translation. All right, let's now go to number 15. I want you to take that quadrilateral, translate it 4 to the left and 3 up, find the coordinates of the image, and then I want you to find in your notes in that left-hand column where it says line segment AB, line segment A prime, B prime, that represents the lengths of the line segments, and the next column right next to that on the right-hand side re represents the slope. So what you're going to do is you're going to translate it and then find the length, and then you have all this stuff down below it, and then you're going to find the slope, and then all this stuff down below it. I want you to figure out the translation and then find the lengths of all the sides and the slopes of all the sides of both the original pre-image and the translated image. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. So first thing we need to do is to translate the figure, just starting with uh, one vertex at a time. That's the easiest, probably the easiest way to deal with this. And so the translated figure looks like this. And then you were supposed to come up with the lengths of each of the sides on both figures and the slope, and then compare those two things. So the lengths should all look like this, square root of 10 there and square root of 10 there. And the reason is because uh, we could make a right triangle here. This is side length 1 and 3. Same thing there. That ends up being the square root of 10 when we use the Pythagorean theorem. BC, that's easy. That is a length of 3. Same thing with B prime, C prime, CD, and C prime, D prime. Both two, those are both easy. And then on A, D, and A prime, D prime, you would have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Any questions on the lengths? Okay, and then the slopes, just use the rise over the run, one-third, one-third, B, C, and B prime, C prime. This was the one that some of you had forgotten. When you have a vertical line, it has a slope that is undefined. You have three over zero. That is also undefined. Any horizontal line like C, D, and C prime, D prime, those both have a slope of zero. And A, D, and A prime, D prime have slopes that are negative 2. Any questions about any of those? All right, and then if we were to take and connect A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime, D to D prime, they would all have the same slope. And in fact, the slopes would be negative 3 fourths. All right, I've got one more thing that I need you to add to your notes. And that would be uh, this right here. Go ahead and please add this translation summary in your notes because we're going to keep coming back to this idea. Translated figures, corresponding sides have the same length. We did some work with that. Corresponding angles have the same measure. We haven't dealt with the angles quite yet. We will um, in about a week. Corresponding sides are parallel to each other, which means that their slopes are the same. So I'll give you about a minute or so to get that written down. 